Okay. Hello, and this is uh, unit three or unit 1.3, our piecewise function. It's a really short video because really this leads into continuity. Um, but can you interpret piecewise functions? Can you create them? And really, from the calculus perspective, can you do a algebraic solve to understand what's happening on the left and right side of our piecewise functions at a specific x value point? So here's our lesson objective. Again, this ties into can I solve for limits using piecewise functions, not necessarily do I know how to create a piecewise function because that is an older concept. So what is a piecewise defined function? If I've never seen one before, a piecewise is simply a function or a graph that is in several parts. So I have a couple example problems here for you. Here's one piecewise on our left and one piecewise. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought I had another one in here. Might be taking my continuity. So the question is how many parts parts does this function actually have? And as you can see, you can see a part right here, a part right here, a part right here, a part right here. That's four parts so far, but I cannot forget this little part right here because that is technically part of my piecewise function. It is a coordinate point, but it is part of my function. So it does have, excuse me, it does have five parts. Um, but looking at this same graph, how would I know how to use those parts? If I'm just given this graph, I have to be able to determine those little, the little um, equations as they go. These are all little linear equations, so that's kind of nice. I can see that this is a, a y equals mx plus b formula with my b, my y-intercept being 1, and my slope, my m, being down 1 over 1. So negative 1 over 1 gives me a slope of negative 1. And I can continue on and create the points for every single part of this graph. So let's look through that. Here's that first one that I told you about, um, y equals negative x plus 1. My next line is simply a constant at y equals 1. Then we have another line right here which is going to have a positive slope. Uh, but of course, I'd have to figure out that y-intercept by extending down. It would come down, and it would come down to negative 1. So that means that I have a point at y equals x minus 1. And again, I do the same with this line right here. I extend until I get to that y-intercept, which I think is at about 5. And I realize that this is a slope of negative 1 as well. So that becomes y equals negative x plus 5. And I can't forget my coordinate point, um, which is at... 2, 2 right here, and then I, I identified that discontinuity, but we'll talk about that in a second, or we'll talk about that in our next video. I identified that hole right there at 2, comma 1, because it is important for us. So how would I write the piecewise function for this graph? I hope that you pause and take a moment and see if you can figure out what would be the function right here. What's that equation? What would be the function right here? That equation. What's this coordinate point? And what is this function? So again, I would suggest that you pause and see if you can write out those equations. Okay, if you pause, welcome back. So here are those answers for you. Y equals X squared was the left side. And why did I place it on here twice? Y equals X, X squared on the right side is because there is that discontinuity right there. So in my mind, I want to realize that those are two separate pieces. And however I write that, if I write it as a single line accounting for that whole, or if I write it as two separate lines, I just want to make sure I'm noticing it. Also, we have a constant at Y equals zero, and I identified those coordinate points that are important for us. Okay, once more I have another you do it. Take time to pause, figure it out. So here is a function. Um, I know it's a little hard to see because I've got this, this bar down here, but there's a quadratic down here, a linear line, a linear line, and a constant line. So take a moment to pause, see if you can answer these. Okay, if you pause, welcome back, and here are your answers. So that was y equals x squared minus 1. This line right here is y equals 2x, y equals negative 2x plus 4. And of course, we have a constant at y equals 0 with two coordinate points that are um, specified. If you'd like to follow along with some Desmos links, uh, I am going to showcase these graphs, but there's two graphs right here. You can follow along that. Um, addition right here, desmos.com backslash calculator, we should all know. But that addition right there says 4 L K. E-O-I-D-K-6-0. 
J. So if you choose to follow along, you can. Of course, you can always pause and read that title out for yourself. But let's look at our first example. So if we have this piecewise function, which is this right here, my piecewise function, they want us to determine the limit and the function value and answer whether or not does the limit truly exist um, and what's kind of happening with this graph. So basically an explanation. So I'm going to look at my piecewise function. I'm going to take it piece by piece. If we're going to approach this graphically, which this one is asking us to draw the graph, so we are approaching it graphically, then I'm going to take my piecewise function little bit by little bit. I know that this is the parent function of our quadratics, our polynomials, right? Specifically the quadratic function. And in fact, it's a negative quadratic, so that tells me that if I'm drawing this graph somewhere along here, um, that it would originally have started looking kind of like this. Oops. Right? But we also have to account for this uh, plus one, which is that shift. So really, we're looking at a quadratic that starts up here and comes down. Okay? But it tells me at one, at x equals one, sorry, at x equals one, that my function can't exist there. So I trot along and I figure out what's happening at x equals one. And I believe that that is a zero point, but I can plug that in. One minus one is gonna equal zero. So yes, so I should have a point at one comma zero that actually doesn't exist. So I drew that incorrectly. It should not be filled in. It should be an open hole. So that is in essence what we are drawing. Then I have to look at this second part Oops, wrong button. I have to look at the second part of my piecewise up here, and I see that at x equals 1, y equals 2, because that's what that's saying. Function value f of x, another way we could say that is y, so y equals 2. Well, if at x it's 1, and at y it's 2, and it's nothing else at any other points, then that is a coordinate point. That's how you read that piecewise function. So I come to 1, and I go up to 2. This is one, two, three, two, three. This is one, two, three. Okay. So now I have a point at one comma two. So now I can look. In order to find the limit at a point, I have to know the limit from the left and the limit from the right. So the limit as x approaches one from the left. Oops, from the left. What's happening? Do, 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 do. I come there and it's equal to zero. What about from the right? I look back at my graph. And it's also equal to zero. So if the limit from the left equals zero and the limit from the right equals zero, then that means my limit at my point also equals zero. But what's happening at that function value? Well, we'll go back to my function. And at one, there's a big hole. But if I look above, there is a coordinate point above. That's part of my piecewise function. It's part of the function. Hear that word, piecewise function. This is still part of the function. It may not be the original graph down here, but it is still part of the function. So at f of 1, my number is 2, right? That's pretty easy, right? We've been doing this a little bit. We've been kind of sussing it up. So I feel like you guys kind of have a handle on this. But let's give a true visual representation instead of Miss Jack's kind of wonky looking graph. And there it is. There's our true representation. So there's my negative quadratic. I have a hole at 1 comma 0. I have a coordinate point at 1 comma 2. And so that shows that the limit does exist because I am approaching the same value from the left and the same value from the right. But my function value is separate. And what that tells me is that my function is discontinuous. You can see that your function is discontinuous. There's a giant hole right there. But algebraically, in our next video, we're going to figure out the formal definition of continuity and what happens. This is kind of our legwork, our groundwork. So let's do one more example.